What is this cursed item? <laughs> it's a dual head? A dual head AIO. It's a dual head AIO from Silverstone that's really designed for use in a server workstation context. Dual processor. It's actually pretty awesome. Let's take a look. I think it's a part, I got a power supply swap that I'm going on with. This is a dual processor. This is Epic with 3D V-Cache. So this is a, an older generation Epic with 3D V-Cache. But this is still a fantastic platform for computational fluid dynamics and, and everything like that. This cooler is thick. And it's designed to dissipate up to 800 watts from two processors. It's also a dual pump design. There's there's pumps on both sides, one for each CPU, which keeps the pressure up. And I've found that this cooler works best when it's in a push-pull configuration. Silverstone pretty much has cornered the market on AIO cooling for the AMD platform. Well, not just the AMD platform, also Xeons. They have adapters, metal plates, there's different versions, but it's, just, it's the same cooler, just has a different metal plate that surrounds the cooler, so you can order different kits and, and do that. This one, so in the box you get three coolers, that are the APA1225H12 12 volt DC fans. And these are great, but I would recommend a push-pull configuration. I think at this price it would be nice <laughs> if they included six fans in the box, but eh, I'll live. This is the XE360P Double D. <whistles> and what do you know it? It works fantastic in a Silverstone chassis anyway, because you know, it's designed for a 360 millimeter cooler anyway. So whether we're talking about Epic or Threadripper, I mean, they have single socket versions, obviously. This comes with two sets of screws that are different lengths. They are designed for different thicknesses of fan. So you can use thicker fans than come with this, like true server grade fans. So it's somewhat fun way to do this if you're mounting it, it's like as a sandwich for the fans between the radiator. I mean, you can just mount the radiator to the case and then mount the fans on the back, but I'm probably gonna do a push-pull configuration. So I want the fans in the front so it's easy to mount the fans on this side. Packing tape or masking tape, especially the really wide masking tape. This is not as wide as I normally use, but this will do. It's much easier to deal with, with tape on the top and the bottom. And then look, wasn't that much easier? And no one can see the other piece of tape on the bottom. And this setup so far requires five four pin fan headers. Well, requires is perhaps a bit strong of a word because it does come with a two splitter and a three splitter. So really you could do it with just two four pin fan headers, one for your fans, one for your pumps. Also recommend reusing this. So this is a Molex adapter. This would be a great choice to use for your pumps. It makes your pumps run all the time. Sometimes it makes the pumps last longer if they're not running full tilt always but the Ziploc bag is also useful for putting the extra screws back in. Now, if you do want to do a push-pull configuration, you'll have to order an extra set of long screws or uh, use two screws per fan on the other side. If you do ch choose to use the extra long screws in the short depth rack with the dual processor motherboard, there's not enough clearance. All right, this is mounted, this is legit, this is some good stuff. Silverstone also makes some fantastic power supplies. I need a power supply for this setup. I've covered several Silverstone power supplies in the past, but 1000 watt FSP Hydro TI Pro. This is really meant for a desktop, but it's gonna work fine in here. Power supply is 150 millimeters deep and 86 millimeters tall. 100, it's, it's 150 millimeter, it's a standard, but it's 1000 watts. And we've got the ATX 12V2 connector because I'm gonna be putting some workstation cards in here that have that, that are also 600 watts. That doesn't, that math doesn't work. 280 watts per socket, and then a 600 watt GPU, eh, it'll be fine. We use NVIDIA SMI to limit it to 450 watts. And here's our lovely brick-like power supply. Feels like a real power supply. Usually like how heavy the power supply is, it's a good indicator of how good the power supply is. This power supply comes with four peripheral cables for SATA, Molex, and everything else that you need. So if you wanna run this, like in one of the fractal cases that has a ton three and a half inch base, you could totally do that. Although, you know, Silverstone does actually have larger cases. If you're getting a little claustrophobic in the 4U case, might I interest you in the Silverstone 
5U. And the Silverstone 5U has giant fans in the front. Now, that makes 360 millimeter radiator mounting a little more interesting. They actually do include some nice accessories and a bracket for this case. It is cavernous on the inside and it's got a nice 140 millimeter rear exhaust. It'll hold a ton of drives mounted this way on the bar. You can mount drives on the bar on that one too. I didn't, I don't have the, the bar picture. It has intrusion detection, just like everything else, eight slots. You can run this with a dual power supply, but it's ATX and SFX, which is weird, but it includes the brackets for that. And there's a punch out on the back. Now this is, this has been around forever, this Silverstone layout. Silverstone has a new version of this that we'll be taking a look at soon. So that's pretty much it. This is ready to add storage GPUs, networking, whatever else. Although the onboard networking here, I think is 10 gig and it'll, it'll probably be fine. But I may end up adding a 100 gig network to it, network card. I've been testing the Ubiquiti 100 gig chipset for the last few months. It's, it's pretty nice. It's about equivalent to like a Broadcom Tomahawk 4, but it's not, it's not the Broadcom chipset. It's a, it's a competitive chipset, but their 25 slash 100 gig switch from, I've been impressed. And we're booted. Look at that. This thing is, deceptively quiet. It actually will be louder in its final form because it's gonna need some airflow. It's a uh, it's boot looping because it's not got the network plugged in and it knows that it shouldn't just sit there, which is pretty awesome. This is 64 cores, 7773X. So these CPUs are about to be pressed into service for computational fluid dynamics, things that benefit from a lot of cache and maybe some revisit of compiling software and that sort of thing, but I wanted to get this set up. So this has been a quick look at uh, the uh, XE360 dual cooler from Silverstone, which is really awesome, in a Silverstone chassis or two with an FSP power supply. It's sort of weird, I know, I know. Silverstone has really good power supplies too, but it's just how this build shook out. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you have any questions about this build or you wanna see something tested on this platform that you think dual 64 core processors would work out really well that have extra V-cache, uh, let me know. Hit me up in the forum. All right, I'm signing out, and I'll see you in the forum.